Hi everyone, welcome to Couchbase Coding with Matthew Groves. This is a 10 minute-ish slice of my day as a developer advocate, live every day on Twitch, on YouTube, and today I'm trying Periscope. Uh, please send me your comments, questions, suggestions at the email address or Twitter up there. I'd love to hear from you. Uh, Periscope is showing me kind of a warning that my bitrate is too high, so uh, I'm sorry Periscope if uh, this isn't uh, working quite right, so I'll experiment with this um, later this week. Also, if you're chatting on Periscope, I probably can't see your message, or at least it's not going to appear in the Restreamio chat. I don't think they support Periscope yet. So I'll try to look at your messages in Periscope, but um, if you can't see them at home, that's that's why. All right, uh, today's music in the waiting room was again Urbana Matronica, the Wu Ya mix by Spinning Merkaba. I didn't have time to change it today. I gotta get on the road here soon, so I thought I would get this stream out today quickly. I want to experiment with a new game today, and this game is called the uh, Google Autocomplete Asks. And let me change my resolution here. But this was inspired by some videos I saw uh, on YouTube called the Wired Autocomplete Interview, where they type in part of a question to Google, and it, it finishes up the question, and they give those questions to celebrities, which it, it sometimes is very, very funny, sometimes it's really interesting. But I thought I'd do the same thing with Couchbase. And so here I am at Google. I'm going to start typing in some interesting stuff here. And I've already done this kind of in advance to get an idea of what I'm going to talk about today. But uh, I, I typed in Couchbase, how many? So I get these questions here. Couchbase, how many replicas? Couchbase, how many nodes? How many buckets? How many views? And I've gotten some of these questions uh, over you know, various presentations and in person at, at the booths and stuff. So I thought I'd try to answer them here in the video as well. So let's start with how many replicas. And uh, so if I go to a bucket in Couchbase and I create a new bucket, and I'm just going to call this episode, what is today, 23, 22? What are we looking at here? 23, episode 23, and I'll just make a small bucket. What you can do is you can turn on replication. Uh, it's on by default, but you can select one, two, or three. So this is the number of basically backup copies of each document as it gets written or mutated in Couchbase that Couchbase will create in other nodes in the cluster. Now I only have the one node running here locally on my machine, but I can still define up to three total replicas, which means that assuming I have enough nodes, uh, in this case it's gonna, I'm gonna have to have four nodes, right? So a document comes in to its primary, it, the node where it's going to be stored, um, the main copy, the active copy, it's gonna be stored on a node and then it will be put into replication queue to be stored on three other nodes. All right, so you'd have a backup copy on three other nodes, a replica on three other nodes. Now, those replicas, typically you don't touch those as a developer. You might sometimes, you might wanna make a special request to say get from replica, uh, especially if, if the node with the active document is down th during some temporary period of time while that's happening. You may wanna get a read-only copy from a replica. But typically you don't. Typically you just go and get the document. It's going to find the active document for you. But the answer to how many replicas? Well, you can go anywhere from zero up to three. And the default is going to be one. Uh, but if you notice here, if uh, you go to servers here, it's going to give you a warning if you don't have enough nodes to cover replication. Right? So I only have one node, and I'm saying replicate it to one other node. I don't have another node, so I'm going to get this warning message here. Once that node comes online, it'll start pushing those into a replication over there. So hopefully that answers the uh, Google autocomplete question. All right, what else? Google how many nodes? All right, so um, this will take a little bit of explaining here. So the, the concept of a bucket in Couchbase is kind of a logical one. Underlying a bucket is what's called a V bucket. And there's lots of documentation around this to explain it in more detail. But every document gets put into a V bucket. And there's a mapping function that determines which V bucket uh, that document should go into. So there's always, well, there's all, let's just go with that. There's always 1,024 V buckets, all right? Uh, no matter how many nodes you actually have, there's 1,024 V buckets that make up a bucket. And the document is going to go through a CRC32 algorithm, the document key, I believe, go through CRC32, and that will construct some value that determines which V bucket it goes into, right? So here's a little example here. It goes to the hash. The hash might put it into V bucket one, two, three, and all those live on server A. 
uh, four, five, and six might live on server B. And then if I add a server D later on, these V buckets will be rebalanced to distribute them evenly amongst, now it would be servers A through D. Okay, uh, and the question was, now how many nodes in Couchbase? Well, you're going to need at least one node, right? Uh, but that's not terribly useful as a distributed database. So we usually recommend starting out with at least three nodes to provide enough replication uh, and, and failover possibilities there. Uh, maybe four, depending on your use case. And then as you get, you know, as you figure out how much data is going to be in there, your query requirements and so on, there's lots of discussions we could go through to determine what size should the cluster be, how much RAM should I give this machine, do I need multi-dimensional scaling, things like that. But to answer the question, how many nodes? Hypothetically, the most nodes you can have in a couch-based cluster, because there are 1,024 V buckets, is 1,024 nodes. Then you'd have one V bucket per node at the maximum. Now, in reality, I don't think any of our customers that I've heard of anyway, or any of our users, uh, have that many uh, nodes in a cluster. Uh, usually it's around, I, I think, if you looked at LinkedIn, some of their engineering blog posts, they might provide some more details, but I think they're one of the largest, uh, some of the largest clusters I've seen, and they are uh, we're talking hundreds of nodes, I believe, for that. Uh, and they have, you know, lots and lots of clusters, but they have in any one given cluster, I think the most they have is, is maybe 100 or 200. At, at some point, the, the physics and the networking starts to make more buckets, uh, kind of uh, too much overhead, right? Uh, but hypothetically, it's 1,024 is the most number of nodes. Okay, what else? Uh, how many buckets? I get this question a lot too. I, I, well, I kind of don't get this question directly. I get kind of a question around it, which is, uh, you know, how should I, should I structure my data where I have one bucket per document type, essentially? So in, in travel sample here, uh, if I go to query here and bring up travel sample, you'll see that travel sample has a document type of, uh, what is this, um, airline, okay, uh, route, landmark, airport, hotel, uh, it's, uh, I think that's it, but that, you get the idea. So all those types of documents are in this bucket. But someone's new to Couchbase might think, okay, well, I need an airline, excuse me, an airline bucket. I need a landmark bucket. I need a hotel bucket. So they want to organize their data at the bucket level. And right now, that's not recommended. So the most buckets you should think about in a cluster, the very top ceiling, I think might even be a hard limit, is 10 buckets. All right, so a bucket is kind of analogous to a database. And you probably don't even want that many buckets because, again, we're talking, remember the V buckets issue. We have 1,024 V buckets behind each one of these buckets. And so we get some, again, some networking issues uh, when, you, when you come down to that. So if you have too many buckets, it's going to uh, be too much for your cluster to handle. So we recommend keeping the bucket number relatively low. Um, you know, there are some things that you might need multiple buckets for, different sets of data, applications, different security access, things like that. Uh, so keep it to under 10 is my recommendation. And then within each bucket, you can delineate the document types by a type field or some other you know, key structure, something like that. But generally keep uh, all those in, in one bucket. All right, and there's one more. How many views? Okay, so I, th I think what we're talking about here is if we go to indexes, there's a thing called views here. And these are MapReduce views. So uh, episode 23, and this is my view. So you can create a design document, and then the design document can contain one or more views, and you can have multiple design documents, etc. And then a view is just a piece of JavaScript with a MapReduce function in it that'll execute some query. Um, and this will be against, uh, I don't know. Yeah, so you can see I'm getting results here. Not very interesting query here. But the question... I don't know if there's really a limit to the number of views. It, it, it probably there is a diminishing returns after you have, you know, tons and tons of views. Um, but uh, my question, I actually asked um, some of our uh, engineers and support people internally, was, what's a typical number of views for customers who are using uh, the the MapReduce uh, the, the, these indexes? And and by the way, we're kind of recommending that you not use these. Uh, unless you absolutely need them, we recommend you're using nickel instead, using you know, a SQL query, instead of writing your MapReduce query. But there are some situations right now where MapReduce may be the best uh, idea. 
the best alternative. Um, I think those are going to reduce as, as time goes on. But the, my question was, what's typical number of views? Because I wanted to get an idea of how, how complicated would it be typically to move a customer from MapReduce to Nickel or uh, you know, how many is a large amount? What's the range there? And I, I don't I think I have an exact answer on the stats, but uh, they did show me a customer who is kind of using MapReduce heavily. Uh, I'm not going to name them because I, f well, I forget who they are. Uh, but they were in around the 100-ish, 150-ish views total. Uh, not not uh, design documents, but total number of views. So that's, and that was a relatively complex uh, use case. And, and there's some customers where it's just, you know, one or a handful of views, right? Or a lot of customers, in fact, don't use any views, especially if they're using nickel these days. But that is sort of the the, the maximum sort of range there is somewhere from zero to 100 uh, not because there's a limit, I don't think there's a limit, but because that's just sort of where it's like the sweet spot, the, the practicality limit there. Having more than 100 views, uh, it may indicate some other sort of design problem or um, something that needs to be changed in modeling, perhaps. I don't know. Uh, but that's, uh, that's my understanding of number of views. So there we go. That's the four how many questions that Google is supplying me. I hope this was helpful for you. If you have any questions that Google's not asking, please send them on to me. Um, emails up there, up there, uh, Twitter's up there. You can reach me at those two addresses. Anybody on Periscope say anything? It looks like no. So I'm going to try to figure out the Periscope thing uh, later this week. But uh, that's it. I'll be traveling in Michigan this week. But I think most of the rest of the week I'll be able to stream to normal time. So we'll see you tomorrow. Thanks very much for watching.